Let's examine the character of Morris Townsend in Washington Square. So he is one of the main characters, whilst of course Catherine is our protagonist, our tragic heroine in this narrative. He is the other antagonist, okay? Remember that Dr. Sloper is an antagonist. Even if he's Catherine's dad, he is not kind to her. He's quite spiteful. He puts her down. He stands in the way of her happiness. However, Morris Townsend is no better. Morris Townsend is a very attractive young man who's quite opportunistic. He sees Catherine as an opportunity to re-inherit a great amount of wealth after he has squandered his own wealth, okay? So he is the cousin of Arthur Townsend who's marrying Mrs. Almond's daughter, okay? So this is, um, Catherine is the niece of Mrs. Almond and her daughter Marion is marrying Arthur Townsend, who's the more successful cousin of Morris Townsend. However, Morris Townsend basically went on his own travels earlier on in his life and totally squandered all of his money. And he uses his good looks and his charm in order to schmooze his way through upper New York society. And he targets Catherine specifically once he realizes that she has a huge inheritance. She's gonna be an heiress of a large fortune from her dead mother, but equally a larger fortune from Dr. Sloper. However, there is instant friction between Dr. Sloper and Morris Townsend. He's unable to charm Dr. Sloper. Dr. Sloper sees through him. Remember that Dr. Sloper is uh, what we would call a gatekeeper to elite New York society. He's able to instantly tell that Morris Townsend is an opportunistic man. And Morris Townsend, once he realizes that Catherine, if he marries her, he would only benefit from the inheritance left over from Catherine's mother, but not the fortune that Catherine's father would leave because he would disinherit. He is too greedy and he decides to break off the engagement completely. He then disappears and then resurfaces when he's much older to try and rekindle a friendship with Catherine. However, Catherine is now older and much wiser, rejects their relationship. So if you're studying the character of Morris, it's good to try and remember key quotations and also some word level analysis you can do and also structural analysis you can do if you're writing about his character. So as you can see behind me, I've selected the most relevant quotations which you can consider if you're thinking about studying or writing about Morris Townsend's character in Washington Square. So let's go over them. The first quotation, which is very important, which highlights, of course, his status in society, is we learned that Morris Townsend was poor. And this is a simple sentence. This is a structural point. Of course, this is illustrating is within elite New York society, Morris Townsend distinctively stands out, not because he's attractive, but most importantly, he actually stands out because he doesn't have money, right? A gentleman in New York society in the 1800s needed to have money. Same goes for today, okay? A man of upper class status, one of the elements of being part of this um, elite crop of society is you do need to have money and Morris squandered all of his money okay so of course here it's established to us really early on that Morris is definitely mercenary he's a wolf okay and he sees Catherine as sheep that he can you know use devour and discard and what this is illustrating is that he is an antagonistic character the other quotation which illustrates Morris's character is when he, you know, um, anticipates that Dr. Sloper is, you know, going to try and uh, change Catherine's mind about marrying him. And Morris manipulatively tells Catherine, so he's quite manipulative and quite cunning. He tells Catherine, oh, he will tell you that I'm a mercenary, okay? He will tell you I'm a mercenary. Mercenary is somebody who does things out of the money profit they can get from doing that action, okay? So, of course, this adjective mercenary shows that Morris is actually revealing his intentions, but he's doing so in a really clever, cunning way. He's saying, oh, you know, I hope you don't believe I'm a mercenary. I, I love you, Catherine. I totally love you. And um, I totally want to be with you. I'm not with you for your money, okay? And then he later on reveals that he definitely was with her for her money. Again, what this is illustrating, especially this adjective, is that Morris is very cunning, very conniving, and very, very manipulative as a character, okay? He's very, very cunning. The other quotation which illustrates that he is very duplicitous, he's two-faced, is when Catherine is talking, remember that Catherine is plain, she's a bit dull, he frankly finds her quite boring, okay? And he states, in his mind, so he's thinking this, gracious heaven, what a dull woman! Morris exclaimed to himself. And of course here, the hyperbole, gracious heaven, and this exclamatory sentence, wrote an exclamatory sentence, a sentence that shows a strong emotion, ends with an exclamation mark. We can see here that Morris is very two-faced, is very duplicitous as a character, okay? We're not supposed to like him. We can clearly see that he has one clear intent in marrying Catherine, 
which is just to take all her money. Remember that men during this time in society, in 1800s New York society, once they married a woman, the woman subsequently became their property and everything that they had, they inherited, okay? So he stood to gain a lot from marrying Catherine, from fooling her, tricking her into marriage, and then taking over all her money. The next quotation, which is related to his character is, when he realizes, after she's come back from the year long trip in Europe with her father, he realizes that the dad has never changed his mind and he will never inherit the money from Dr. Sloper. He, the game is up, the gig is up. And suddenly his charming appearance changes and he now figures out how he's gonna dump Catherine because Catherine is looking at him and she's telling him, look, you know, we can still get married because I still have my mom's inheritance, it's fine, it's fine. And Morris realizes he's not gonna inherit as much as he thought he would from marrying her. And Catherine looks at him and it seemed to her that a mask had suddenly fall fallen from his face, okay? So it seemed to her that a mask had suddenly fallen from his face. The mask is a really powerful metaphor. We can see that Morris up until this point was prepared to pretend, pretend, pretend until he married her. Then he would take an inheritance. And suddenly when the prospect of inheriting Dr. Sloper's money was no longer there, this mask of charm, this mask of handsomeness suddenly fell from his face and his true intentions were revealed. He never loved Catherine and now he's gonna ghost her, okay? He's gonna, uh, well, not necessarily ghost her, but he's definitely gonna break up with her. The next quotation is, of course, when now Morris is talking to Mrs. Fenneman and he's like, oh, you know, I'm gonna have to break up with her. I don't wanna be the, the reason why her dad disinherits her. Oh, what was me? And he says, he's pretending as he's talking to Mrs. Fenneman and he says, a man should know when he is beaten. I must give her up, okay? And this is an exclamatory sentence, I must give her up. And of course, also the verb beaten. What this is showing is that he is basically um, putting the blame of his actions on Dr. Sloper. He's a very slippery character. He tries to do things that are very conniving. And now here when he says, you know, a man must know when he's beaten, this verb is taking the blame for his own actions away from him and basically saying it's Dr. Sloper's fault that Catherine, that I'm gonna have to dump Catherine, okay? Again, what we can see here is he's very conniving. He's very manipulative, okay? And he gets away with it in Dr. In um, Mrs. Penniman's eyes. Dr. Sloper obviously sees this and totally sees through this. But Mrs. Penniman says, oh, I can't see what you mean. Yes, I'm so sorry. Catherine initially believes him, but I think as the years go by in the novel, we realize that it maybe dawns on her that he, his love was never that quite genuine, okay? The final quotation relating to his character is, when he uh, is telling Mrs. Penman, look, you're gonna have to dump her for me. I'm not gonna dump her, let her down easily. And he says, you know, this is the reason. I don't want to know how much Catherine loves me, ellipsis. It would be too painful. So he's using these declarative sentences. Remember declarative sentences is a sentence that states a fact, feeling or mood. He's using these declarative sentences to also not even break up with Catherine himself. He's telling Mrs. Penman, oh, you know, um, I don't want to know how much she loves uh, She loves me. It would be too painful. Please break up with her on my behalf, okay? Again, this is showing him to be a coward. He's very cowardly in his behavior. He's very um, dishonest. And definitely he's a real mercenary in his behavior, okay? So of course, we as an audience, and not as the audience, as readers, should definitely see him for what he truly is, okay? So he's a mercenary, and he's also somebody who uses his charms to get what he wants in New York society, which can be quite superficial, very much based on appearances. He was able to do so beforehand, but now he came across a real opponent in Dr. Sloper, and he wasn't able to maneuver his way in order to get Catherine's wealth, okay? So that's really it when it comes to Morris Townsend's character. Thank you so much for listening.